first guest tonight is a Golden Globe-winning actor you know from such films as Moulin Rouge and the Star Wars prequels, as well as his Emmy-nominated work in the FX series Fargo. He stars in Christopher Robin, which is in theaters tomorrow. Let's take a look. This place is very big. Do you live here all alone? Just now, yes, but usually no. My wife and daughter are in the countryside for the weekend. Well, why aren't you with them? Well, Oh. I had to stay for work. Why are you here and not in the forest with your friends? That's the question. Well, I couldn't find anybody. And I couldn't find anyone either. And I looked for them both. Hello? Oh. Piglet? Eeyore? Tigger? Where is everybody? Exactly. Where is Tigger or Kangaroo? Well, that's why I'm here. Please welcome back to the show, you and McGregor, everyone. <laughs> so lovely to have you back. I'm glad to be here. It's so very nice. <laughs> this is very exciting. You are, uh, from those who couldn't figure it out from the clip, yeah. You're an adult Christopher Robin. Yes, a grown-up Christopher Robin. That's very exciting. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice to take someone that we know iconically like that, like a young... I've done it the other way. In the Star Wars films, I took an older character who was iconic and tried to play him as a younger man, and this time it's the reverse. <laughs> yeah, that's... Yeah. Well, you'll have to let me know how this one works out for you. That's yeah, great. we'll see. We'll see how it goes. And um, obviously, uh, an incredible amount of CGI in this film. Yes. Well, yes. I it, it's so funny because I remember it like that. Like, I remember we had a little Winnie the Pooh who was like a teddy bear. He didn't, he wasn't a puppet or he wasn't animated in any way. Because you couldn't get the real Winnie the Pooh, right? He turned he down the project. Too, yeah. Yeah. He was too expensive. <laughs> yeah, of course. Right, yeah. But we had this little teddy bear and then a, a teddy bear for each of the creatures. And Mark Forster, our brilliant director, cast this group of enthusiastic young actors, most of them just out of drama school, to play each of the creatures. So when we were playing a scene, you know, they would be there with the teddy bear and they'd move him around and do the voice and, 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 and act with us in the scenes. And then improvise. We wanted to go away from the text and improvise. They would improvise with us and they were brilliant. And I got used to his little face because he looked just like that. I mean, it was like acting with a little bear, <laughs> yeah. you know? So when I watched the film for the first time, I sort of... I kept, I kept having to remind myself that he wasn't there on the day. Because <laughs> yeah. it just sort of is how I remember it. And because we know the character so well, we, I could imagine how he might be, but they did him so beautifully. He's it's brilliant. really wonderful. And uh, the voice is uh, someone who voiced him in the 1980 Winnie the Pooh cartoon. Jim uh, Cummings. Yeah, which is incredibly yes. nice to hear such a familiar voice. It would be weird if Winnie the Pooh sounded different. Someone else, yes. Yeah. It's, if he had, like, a thick New York accent, it would be a huge... <laughs> or Scottish. Yeah, Scottish, yeah. yeah. Christopher! <laughs> Christopher Robin! Got Everybody. your head out of your ass! <laughs> that was very good. <laughs> oh, thank you very That's much. I, I can't believe I had the nerve to do my B-minus Scottish impression in front of you. That was very good, yeah. Um, good. But, you know, it would, you would think a child would be excited to come on a set and see these actors holding these puppets, but some of the puppets were, were, would maybe freak out a child if they came. To, uh... Yes. We had... The truth is we had the beautiful finished product, the lovely bear to act with. And it was for the visual effects people to see what he looked like in the light and everything. But they couldn't animate him on top of that hairy bear. So we had... <laughs> <laughs> I just said hairy bear on television. Yeah, yeah. But we had... So a we lot had... of people who were, like, in the kitchen and had totally toned this out were like, oh... Well. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so we had a... They had a grey... Just a canvas bear with no hair. And then, and, and they, I guess they would animate him on top of that gray bear. But the, they also sometimes needed one without a head. <laughs> so you do, you do takes with a gray headless bear. <laughs> and then there was a real horror show one where it was just his torso, no arms, legs, or head. <laughs> and it was like the, hor the Guillermo del Toro version, you know. <laughs> and then they had a, an arm on a stick, a poo, a poo on a stick. They had an arm <laughs> on a stick. And um, they had his little feet on sticks as well for the little footstep shots and stuff. So see, that's all haunting. Yeah. <laughs> Although they sh they could do use the torso and do a sequel where like Tigger comes and says something awful's happened. <laughs> <laughs> I lost I lost my mind. I don't know what I, <laughs> I don't know. I, don't know I what did I did something. I woke up. I did something. <laughs>
<laughs> Had you read the books? Did you, is that something? Uh... Yes, I mean, I read them to all my girls. The first one, anyway, there's a series of four or five books, but I, I'm familiar with the first volume. And then I'm sure I must have been read it when I was a kid because I'm so familiar with those stories. And then this sort of, this film takes place post-World War II, and did the timing of when this was happening inform how you wanted to play Christopher Robin? Yeah, I love that era. I watched quite a lot of film. I, I watched a lot of uh, early Alec Guinness films. There's a great film called Man in a White Suit that I watched. Mm -hmm. And there's a British film I watched from here to eternity. And anything where everyone spoke like that, you know. Yeah. Are, you, are you happy, darling? <laughs> Terribly. That kind of thing. <laughs> and um, uh, there was one film that was very handy to me. There's a film called Genevieve, okay. which was about a, a vintage car race in the early 50s or late 40s. And that one was very, the, the main character in that is quite like Christopher Robin. That's nice that you guys, have, that's a very wonderful thing to be able to do research for your work that yeah. is just like watching cool watching old, old films. Watching old films. Because yeah. I grew up watching those old films. And so there's, I, felt, I feel like I've been waiting to play this kind of guy for a long time. Were you, when you were young and watching films like that, were other people your age watching films like that? Because that seems a little. <laughs> I don't think, well, I don't know. On, on the weekends, they would, on BBC Two, they'd have like matinees. On a, on a Saturday and Sunday, they'd play two old films back to back, and I would always be propped up on my elbows watching them. But I, I don't know. I, I do think that I, looking back, I saw a lot of old films because there was nothing else on. Yeah. And Netflix didn't exist. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So you'd and be was... like, you tell me, TV. <laughs> yeah, what is it? Yeah, it's up to What's you. What's it going to be today? Yeah. yeah, exactly. No, that's right.